Okay guys, welcome back to part two. The first video we just finished was the 72 hour bag, be it a get home, a get out, a bug in, a bug out, whatever you want it to be. Okay, your emergency, day kit, whatever. That's a bag that was pretty lightweight, 23 pounds and a 511 Rush 72 pack. Okay, and it had a lot of gear in it, but there is the capability of adding some firepower to your gear if you so choose. I don't have that stuff and this stuff in my bag because I've chosen to forgo the weight for, uh, for the, go with the weight savings versus the extra capabilities that it brings. But I do have an extended stay backpack or a, you know survival bag, one that you have to go out in the woods with, and it has this kind of stuff in it along with a lot of the stuff that you already saw in uh, the 72 hour bag that we just finished and you all it also has a survival kit which you saw if you watched the uh, personal survival kit video which came out a few days ago so this stuff was just some extras that can extend your capabilities but again we'll add a little weight uh, weight is okay as long as there's a use for it as long as you get something out of it okay the first thing that I also have on my rush 72 is this okay and this is their um, scabbard. Okay, you see the straps, it literally just clips on. It's already pre-configured on the side of my 511 pack. And it holds my rifle, okay? And it holds any rifle. It can hold a bolt action, a lever action, or a semi-auto. Any type, any scope, size, what have you. The barrel goes down here, the muzzle goes down there. Rifle goes up here if it's an AR, the handle actually sticks out, the grip and then the stock stick out. But this is a good way to be able to carry my rifle. As you saw, I also had an optional 511 Tac Tech chest rig that I keep next to my bug out bag or stuffed in the front of my bug out bag so that if I needed to, I could go all out with an AR or hunting rifle, survival rifle, and a chest rig to support that system. If I don't need it, I don't take it. Okay, it can stay in the car if I'm putting on the bag and jetting, but it could go if it needs to. Okay onto this gear here some of the other things you can do and before uh, let me mention this man and I'll have to annotate it in the first dang video on the first one I forgot to show you in another pocket I noticed when I was packing everything back up I forgot to show you bug spray sunscreen duct tape and electrical tape and I know everybody's gonna freak out because bug spray sunscreen duct tape electrical tape wasn't in there it was in there I just forgot to show you and I'll put that on the uh, I'll put that on the first video hopefully as some type of annotation and, uh, and get you got hopefully nobody throws a rod over that okay we talked about some type of disaster or a wreck or a car repair after you change your tire you may be dirty uh, a couple of things you might consider are towels right this is an MSR it's literally super tiny I think it weighs one ounce and it pulls out okay from the pack very effective this is like a super duty cloth shop towel, really. But if you put on some hand sanitizer or use some of your water to wash off your hands after a repair, after an injury, what have you, uh, or someone else's injury, then you got a way to dry your hands off. Or if you just kind of got a wet head or whatever, you can dry it off. You want a big towel? Here it is. Something like you may be in a situation where you're jumping in a river or jumping in the lake or the pond or the creek to wash off after something bad or just because you're having to camp out for a few days or whatever this is a super lightweight pack towel that I got from Campmore and I think it was kind of high it was about 20 bucks whereas that other little towel was like 11 but this is more like a chamois nearly but it'll dry you off or the dew inside your tent if that's a problem moisture or dew or whatever condensation if you uh, spill something in your tent you're good to go with this uh, or whatever it's just a towel man these are other options okay another thing that you might add on would be first aid increased first aid I had a trauma kit from with quick, quick clot and stuff I had a tourniquet and all that stuff and I had a baby first aid kit which is the AMK steelhead this is the AMK hunter which isn't made anymore this became the hunter series now okay from AMK they now, now have the steelhead, which was in my 72-hour kit. They have the bighorn. They have the grizzly, which I have the grizzly in my hiking backpack, my big backpack. Uh, so this is another kit that gives you a lot more capability, okay, 
than the first stuff you saw, right? Tons more capability. Okay, trauma stuff, eye stuff, more medicines, some splints, a lot more wound care, little suture kit. I've got a, uh, I've added medicines to it. I added a snake bite kit up here in this little pocket right there. There it is. So you might go with something like that, but then when you get to this, uh, kind of a level two, a stage two first aid kit, or a one and a half, you are up to two and a half pounds. My other one was six ounces. So is it worth it? Well, of course, if you're bleeding out or you have somebody with an injury, it's worth it. But it's just going to be a decision that you have to make. Okay. Some more. Another consideration might be some clothing. As you noticed in the 72-hour bag I talked about, I have a change of clothes. So in case I'm in work clothes, which in my case is a police uniform, or you're in dress clothes or you're in clothes that might be inappropriate for a survival situation, or if you're in fine clothes but they get damaged in some type of disaster or some are torn off of you, you want to have something to put on. Or you might want to be able to give somebody else some clothes to put on if they've lost theirs or they get bloody or they get muddy or what have you. So in this is actually what I use in the winter. This does go in the 72-hour bag in the winter because it's a fleece, a North Face um, fleece jacket, fleece pants. I got both of these on sale at the time from Camp Moore. I always watch their sales. They do tons of them. They're hot deals and stuff. I literally got the jacket for $17.99 instead of $50. And I got the pants for like $29.99 instead of $50. So pretty cool. And they're lightweight. I wore these fle this fleece under my Timberledge Ella Bean Timberledge pants and Timberledge shirt and stuff like that, my synthetics, at a recent patrol life instructor school in Oklahoma where it was cold as can be and raining a lot of the time. And the fleece worked great and it didn't make me sweat to death. So it was easy to layer with and I could unzip it if I got too hot. So you might want to think about that. You may add on a little lantern. Okay, this is a basic Coleman, right? No big deal. It runs on some AA batteries which go in the bottom. I have AA batteries already with my flashlight. I have a little, uh, some extra ones, and I have ability to recharge them with solar. So you may think about a little lantern if you need to air your light. Of course, we already had the glow sticks um, in the uh, in the 72 hour bag, so you've got the you've got the glow sticks if you need those. Also, one of these was in there, and I forgot to show you, but these little. D-rings, they're not really carabiners because you couldn't repel or climb with them, but they're D-rings. Whoops. These are great to clip maybe that Nalgene canteen that I had onto the front of your bag once it's full, so if it ruptures, it doesn't get all your crap wet, or strap anything on anything. This connects whatever to whatever, and these are good. I got literally, these are at Walmart, but I've gotten some from REI and some from Camp Moore before, but literally I think I got five for $7.00 or six dollars at Walmart with this package of different sizes and colors. Okay, an easy but twenty-nine dollars, not super cheap deal, but it's a pack cover, okay? This could go in your pack because it is tiny, you see it in my hand. I uh, got this because it's a rain cover and I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you're gonna put on your stuff and go outdoors, in my experience as a Boy Scout, as a kid and as a hunter, um, a lot of times it rains. At least it does in the south. So even if it's not long, it's enough to get your gear wet. And if your gear's wet, a lot of it's not usable or ruined. So it's good to keep your stuff dry. And a pack cover adds a few ounces of weight and a little bit of size in your pack, but it could be worth it for you. This one's blue. I was kind of disappointed in that. There's not a lot of pack covers out there anymore, but you could use the military, what they call the spare tire cover which is in Woodland or Desert Digital, whatever, you could use that on your pack also. You can pick those up on Gunbroker and eBay pretty pretty cheap, uh, 20, 30 bucks. Okay, another thing you might add is dun, 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 a cook system. I didn't have one in my 72 hour bag. Okay, the reason is I didn't want to be, I'm not planning on being out there so long that I'm having to make a lot of meals. I had snacks, stuff like that, but that's about it. So what I have here is a fuel cartridge, which adds weight. I think that's eight ounces. I have to look on it. It adds weight. This is the bigger one, or this is the medium one. And then it's uh, you got to have a stove and something to cook in. But with that, you can do warmth. If you can't build a fire, it's smokeless. It's super high powered, so it'll beat whatever weather, what have you. Uh, so a cook system could be for you. 
I have one in my extended stuff. I don't carry one of my normal 72. In this bag, my cook stuff, I have a GSI thermal cup, right? Keeps your stuff warm or cold, which is handy. You can put soup in it too. Uh, and that wasn't too bad. I think I got the cup for $9.99. I have a kitchen sink from Sea to Summit. Hey, not a necessity by any means. I'm just showing you some possible luxury items that if you want to take them with you, you can. This is super small and only a few ounces. Okay? But this is a sink so you can do your dishes or transport water or what have you. Okay? And I have GSI Lexan Cutlery. I like a real knife, fork, and spoon because the sporks kind of suck to eat with, especially if you want to use two utensils at once. Okay? And... I've got a GSI Soloist. It's an Inform Soloist. N is in the letter N form. Um, I just got this last year and I've only used it twice, but I like it. So it's a pot. It's a one liter pot. Okay, as you can see. It kind of locks here at the top with a handle. Okay, so you can hold on to it and it's insulated, though this does still get hot on the fire. It has a lid, which of course fell off because I'm shooting video. Nothing can go right. It's got its own stuff sack in here. I've still got it in there because I've never used it, but it's a little uh, little bag that it came with. It's got its own little spork, and then I put a bowl. It comes with this little bowl, okay? So you can put your stuff in there. If you're using dehydrated food, here's a tip for you. You can just pour the water in the bag and eat it out of the bag. You don't have to get dishes dirty, but it's here if you want to, okay? A separate little bowl, or maybe you're eating out of the bag, but you pour half of it out for your kid, someone you're helping, your wife, whatever, okay? So, a cook set. And then, of course, you have to have a stove, and this seems to be the standard, man. I have four of these stupid things now, but they work. And it's the uh, Pocket Rocket, MSR Pocket Rocket. Everybody has these now. This is tiny, it's three ounces. It fits, you spread these out, this little deal. If it's right on top of the pot, of the fuel canister, pardon me, you put your pot on there, which is not a huge surface, but you only have a one liter or two liter pot, probably, and you cook on it. You can also do a frying pan on this, which I did, this ultralight frying pan that I have in my backpack and stuff. It, it works. Okay, three ounces, and it's a stove, but you got to have a cook set, probably, even if you use that $49, $59 titanium pot I just showed you, the Inform Soloist from GSI. You gotta have that and you gotta have a fuel canister which weighs money so it's not just a three ounce stove you gotta have some supporting gear with that but it's handy to have okay I guess last but not least we talk about a sleep system and a shelter you could have a tent okay this is the Kelty Salida 2 I have a Salida 4 and I have a 6 man of their tent but it's not a Salida I think it's Trail Ridge I don't know. Their tents come and go so much, but hey, this whole tent, it's its listed in the catalog as 3 pounds 12 ounces as the normal weight, but it is tiny, okay? I think it's 23 by 7, but it's actually 4 pounds 6 ounces on my scale. I don't know why that is, but still a 4 pound tent, just under 4.5 pounds, not bad. It holds two people comfortably, or if you had to, it holds one and your gear no problem. And it's tiny enough that it can go on my backpacking gear or my extended uh, survival bag. Okay, because my survival bag, like I said, is if I had to walk out in the woods and not come back for a while or make it 100 miles to the deer litter, so something like that, to the cabin. So a tent might be it. It keeps the weather off of you, it keeps the bugs off of you, which is a big deal and if you live in the south especially. And, uh, and it might just be, it gives you a little bit of privacy, although you're not going to want people around you anyway. But... There's a tent, okay? And this one at 150-ish, I actually picked this up 119 on eBay free shipping, but at 150 normal price, I think, an easy investment, right? Some of this other stuff's a lot more than that. The little pocket rock, it was 40, <laughs> it's just a stove. Down to the bottom is a sleep system. This is what I have left. Look how tiny it is. You could, I had the SOL escape bivy, or you could use a space blanket. You could just use those things. But if you really want some comfort or better weather protection or something to keep you alive in a lot more frigid temperatures, which you may have in your area, you're going to want to upgrade your system to include some type of sleep system. I have a Kelty Go Pillow. Okay. 
I think it was literally $9.99 on Campmore. It's tiny, doesn't weigh a thing, but it's a pillow. My neck and back bother me all the time. In 2008, a drunk driver ran into my patrol car. When I was on a traffic stop on the highway, it messed up my neck a little bit. It just bothers me. It's nothing, you know, that gave me a disability. It just, uh, my neck bothers me, especially if I sleep on just my arm or something if I'm camping. So if I get a little bitty pillow, I sleep better. If you sleep better, you feel better the next day and you're not cranky. Okay. Also, I've got this, which is the uh, Climate, K-L-Y-M-I-T, Recon XL, or Inertia XL. Yeah. Inertia XL Recon. Okay, so sorry. This is a uh, sleep mat. This is the repair kit that it comes with. But as you see in there, it's literally a tan, desert tan, uh, sleep system that weighs a sleep mat, insulating mat that weighs one pound, and it's that big. It's about the size of a 20 ounce drink bottle. So this is cool because now you take this out, it inflates, you can blow it up or it just it's a self-inflating deal. I think it's only like five or six breaths to blow it up, by the way, because of the military technology that's in this. It weighs a pound, like I said, and it keeps you off the ground. That does a few things. That number one is more comfortable to you because it doesn't let you, you know, it's, you're not gonna be as sore from sleeping down on the ground. And it insulates you. So if it's super cold, this gets you off of the ground, which sucks the warmth out of your body. You have to do that in a super cold environment. So a little bitty, uh, although they're 100 bucks, they're actually 119 when I bought this, and now I'm seeing them for about 98, 99 on Amazon and eBay. But the Inertia XL Climate, Inertia XL, they make several models. I got the XL because it's full size, but $100, but probably money well spent, especially if you're in a real cold situation. Last but not least, I know you've been seeing it sitting there. You're wanting to know what the heck it is. And it's uh, the Recon. Okay, this is the Recon 4 sleeping bag. I've been looking at these. I've had this one for, uh, this is Gen 2. So I've had it for about a year. I was actually back ordered with the company to get this because they were just getting out the Gen 2s. Um, you saw nothing fancy do, uh, probably do a... Uh, a quick uh, SHOT Show 2013 video with these guys. I had been seeing this for about a year before then because Outdoor Life Magazine, which I love to read, did a bug out or survival uh, preparedness issue about a year, uh, two years ago, and this was a featured bag in there. So I had gotten turned on to this about two years ago, finally got mine about a year ago. They do the two, three, four, and five, and the higher the number, the warmer it is and the bigger it is. This is the four, which is next to the top. And it's a negative 10. Now, notice that that's Celsius. So in the U.S., that's going to be 14 degrees. That's pretty cold, man. I'm in Texas. You know, and we get some nights in the teens, some nights in the 20s, especially in February, January and February, but uh, not a lot of them. I think if I was going to go into some type of super winter situation, okay, maybe I put a negative something bag in there, but how are you going to do it for this size? I mean, are you putting this into perspective that how big this really is, you know? This thing is probably, it's 3.5 pounds, and it's that big, which is nothing. Um, to give you an idea, hmm, what could I use? Okay, to give you an idea, uh, here was that fuel canister, right? Which is probably not very big around, right? Probably three inches around. This thing is maybe nine inches. So, you know, eight or nine inches. It's tiny by even less. You know, it's probably like nine by five. And it's a sleeping bag. It's a real sleeping bag with real synthetic insulation material. It has its cool stuff sack that it comes with, which isn't waterproof, by the way. But hey, what a bag. But not cheap. Man, I got this using a discount. They gave me a discount for being law enforcement at the time and because they were back ordered on the Gen 2s for about two and a half months. So they gave me 10% off. I picked this thing up for 150 and now I think they're 180. They're lesser bags than Tropical, the three or less. I think they go 15 bucks less per per uh, model. And then the five is even higher. I think at 199 now or 219. And you know, geez, man, that's a lot of money. But again, you know, what are we talking about? A sleeping bag that may just save your life. I put it into perspective. I just want you to think through the situation, man. You're on some cold night. you got to spend the night in the car or in the woods or whatever it is. You fill in your blanks for where you live and what you might get into. 
But what would you do if you didn't have a sleeping bag on something that's an extreme weather situation? Now, if it's a summer in Texas, you'll be sweating to death. Low of 85, I think you'll be okay. But, you know, if it's not, what are you going to do? Would you survive the night? Would you have enough clothes to bundle up and just freaking shiver through it and work all night on something so that you stay moving and all that and then try and get some sleep during the day? I don't know. Even if you survive it, it doesn't mean you're going to like it. And it doesn't mean, it's not a guarantee that you even survive it. But if you do, you know, uh, you want to, would it have been a $150 investment to sleep through that night? Or to let one of your kids sleep through that night or whatever the situation is, your wife that's with you, your girlfriend, by you having one sleeping bag that you guys could share and put over you or whatever. Or yourself. I don't know. Again. I appreciate you watching everything. The goal of this video was a part two to show possible extensions that you could get into. In the personal survival kit, if you haven't figured it out, it's all levels. That kit is about six by six. It is six by six. It weighs about a pound and a half and it's designed to, if this was the only thing you could take with you, you could survive. Because it has enough stuff to make food, filter water, uh, fish, signal, things like that. The next level up was the 72 hour bag and I designed that as a level two because that's going to be something that's going to let you maybe walk for a while. It's going to be more water capability and water holding capacity. It's going to have better fire starting. It's going to have some clothes. It's going to have a tool bag. It's going to have a little bit of food with you and stuff like that. Next above that you can have any of these extensions that we've just talked about. Okay. And that's a sleep system, a cook system, extended first aid, extended shelter with a tent or something like that. And there's tons of tents out there. Don't get wrapped around the Kelty Salada too. It's just the one I have. I've been looking at the, uh, at the uh, Fly Creek Ultralight 2 by Big Agnes. It's awesome. Two pounds, 10 ounces. Whereas this one's four pounds, eight ounces. This one was 150, another one was 369. So is it worth 200 more dollars to save two pounds? I don't know. I don't know what kind of money you have. I don't know what kind of mission you have where you have to have a tent, but you got to cut a couple pounds and that's your ticket. You know, go with the Fly Creek Ultralight 2 by Big Agnes. I may buy one just because I keep, it keeps bothering me that it exists and that it would lighten my pack by two pounds. But two pounds may not be a big deal to you. Uh, you may add on, like I said, the cooking and the first aid and the lighting and the towels and the whatever. Okay. Oh, another thing that I didn't have, and, and the reason is, it's funny, I just realized it, but it's on the charger, but that's a walkie-talkie or a ham radio or what have you. A lot of times these things are going to, you know, communications are going to be important to you. I work as a police officer and I'll have my CB on my, you know, walkie-talkie, my radio, portable radio every day on my belt so if I had to that's going in my bug out bag if I have to get out of my get home bag because it's police bands from my local county and all the cities around us and all that stuff and all the fire departments what have you but uh, you know a Motorola radio is a great bet I have several of them and I actually the one that's in my 72 hour bag I just realized was charging so it didn't get in the video I'll also try to annotate that onto the uh, on to the 72-hour thing, but you know those portable ham radios that you see James Jagger and a few different guys show you on YouTube, those are cool and very important. Communications and signaling is just as important in my opinion as uh, your gun could be or as something like that. You know, you're, it could save your life to be able to contact somebody when you're in need. Another item might be those spot PLBs, personal locating beacons that you've seen. Uh, they do require a monthly subscription. I don't have one. But if I was going to do something cool like uh, some Rocky Mountain elk hunt or some Alaska bear hunt or something like that where I was going to be way out, yeah, I'd get one, no problem. They're only about $100, $199, depending on the model, and, you know, X a month, 10 or 20 bucks a month. So I'd do one. But uh, that might be something that you think about as well. Also, it may be a flare situation. If you're going to be a, a lot of maritime stuff, a lot of lake, going or maybe the ocean going the coast um, you might go with a lot of flares or you're in a high and low situation where you're in the mountains so you can shoot a flare and it drifts down for quite a ways flare might be important to you i've seen the pin flares and i've been really thinking about getting one of those orion um, flare pins anyway i really appreciate it as usual if you i'd appreciate it if you like the video and share the video check us out on facebook at scout tactical and of course as always subscribe Thanks.